Hi friends, my name is Vanessa Fernandez and I run the Enneagram workshop and today we're in the middle of a series on defense mechanisms and looking at how defense mechanisms show up for each type and how that might be impacting your inner work journey. Oftentimes these defense mechanisms are subconscious, so we're not even aware that they're happening. We're kind of just moving along our way, feeling like we're doing a great job, we're making progress, and yet there feels like there could be something more and something deeper that we're being kept from. Oftentimes defense mechanisms is what's keeping it from happening. So I'm not gonna give a ton of context around defense mechanisms. If you are looking for that, head back to the type one video, just watch the first couple of minutes. I lay some groundwork around what I mean when I'm talking about defense mechanisms and some of my approach to doing this kind of work. But in this video, we're going straight into type eight and looking at the defense mechanism of denial. So for type eights, as with all the types, our defense mechanism is there to try and help us continue to see ourselves how we want to see ourselves, how we must see ourselves in order to feel safe because our type structure is our armor. And we don't want any chinks in our armor. We don't want any cracks in our armor. And so the defense mechanism keeps us from being present to some of those cracks. Because the problem with our armor is that it is rigid. The problem with our armor is that yes, it protects us. It also keeps us from mobility. It keeps us from living certain parts of our lives. Um, one of the shows that I'm obsessed with is this show back in the medieval times where they had these very elaborate suits of armor. And mostly they would put on those suits of armor when they were going outside of their heavily guarded cities. You know, the cities had these big city walls to keep them safe. And whenever they ventured outside of those cities, they had to wear this armor and the armor would protect them from arrows and all kinds of stuff. When they came back into the city, if they didn't take off their armor, it would chafe them. They wouldn't be able to walk very well. They couldn't certainly couldn't run very quickly. They couldn't really hug people that they loved, couldn't bathe, couldn't do all kinds of human functions because the armor serves one purpose, protection. And it keeps us from other things like connection. Protection and connection are kind of two different ends of the spectrum, right? The more closed off I am, the more protected I am, but the less I have the capacity for connection. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about these defense mechanisms and our type structure. So with type eight, denial is a great way to not be present to some of the parts of humanity that are vulnerable and weak and soft and quiet and tender, right? All of those things feel contradictory to the powerful, strong, independent, knows what they're doing, knows who they are and can handle whatever life throws their way, right? If that's the identification of the type eight, then anything that would feel opposite to that has to be denied. And so type eights can tend to deny all kinds of things, <laughs> um, whether it is they're feeling physically weak, they might deny that, whether it is that they hurt someone's feelings, and in order to be present to the fact that they hurt someone's feelings, they have to feel the pain of knowing they hurt someone they love, so they might just deny that it happened at all. Um, because it's hard to start turning toward that softness, because eights have such a huge heart, it feels like the floodgates would open and they would be overwhelmed with either grief, tenderness, love, or sadness. And so denial is one of the ways that H just kind of form reality to be what they want it to be so that it makes sense for them to be who they want to be, which is that powerful, strong, you know, can handle anything kind of persona. So here are some questions that I would be curious about type eights around your inner work. What parts of this new teaching or this new approach? So what I'm talking about when I'm talking about inner work is you've read a book that's challenging you. You're going to therapy and there's some new ways of thinking coming in. Um, you're engaging in some sort of coaching program and some of the concepts are sort of shaking things up, right? So anytime that we are transforming, typically it begins with some new ideas, some new ways of thinking, some new concepts that are unsettling our old way of being. 
and that's okay. That's part of transformation. You have chaos and then you reorder and then you have chaos and then you reorder. So what parts of this new teaching or new approach is inviting you into vulnerability or revealing a place where you might want to or need to surrender power or what you perceive as power? Does denial sneak in to alleviate you from your experience of that? Is there any part of this new transformation process, this inner work that you're engaging with, that is asking you to engage in a little more vulnerability, a little more transparency, a laying down of some of your armor? And how might denial subconsciously be sneaking in to keep you from experiencing that? It happens so quick, especially for aggressive types, types eights, threes, and sevens. Oof. It's faster than lightning, the way that our defense mechanism just comes in and shuts it down, right? And so I'm curious if you were to slow down, take a few breaths, take a look at what's really being asked of you as you're doing inner work and doing this inner process and pay attention to how denial might be playing a part. And then the next question I'd love to ask you is what parts of you are you trying to protect as you move into your inner work? And how old are they? Inner child work is beautiful work for any type to do, but especially type eights. If you are willing to turn toward that inner child and understand how you are trying to protect that inner child, how old that inner child might be, what that inner child is begging for, asking for, longing for, that might be an interesting exploration and give you a clue around where this denial and this defense mechanism might be showing up to protect that inner child. And here's the thing with children. I have four of them. And so I'm always bringing them into my teachings. Yes, children need to be protected. Absolutely. They need to be safe. They need to have food. They need to have shelter. They need to have stability. They also need connection. A child who is protected, but never connected to, will not be a healthy, thriving child. And so protection is beautiful, but what may be required of you in this next phase of your inner work is a little bit more connection, a little bit more listening to, turning toward, understanding, and that's going to require some of that softness and vulnerability that may be difficult. That denial that may say, oh, I don't need to do inner work. Oh, I don't need to do inner child. Oh, I've already done that. Oh, I've already, I hear this all the time from AIDS and I, and I get it because I'm also extremely resistant to inner child work, although less so as I, the more I do it, the more I love it. I hear from AIDS all the time. Yeah, I've done that work already. Yeah, I did that a long time ago. Yeah, I, I, I figured that out a while ago. I get it. And is that denial coming in and saying, I don't need to look at that anymore because I don't want to look at that anymore because it might invite me into more vulnerability than I'm comfortable with. And that's okay. That's okay to recognize that, but let's be with things in truth rather than denying. And if there is a longing to turn toward parts of yourself, but you just don't know if you have the capacity to be with whatever might come up as you do that, you need to find someone to walk you through that, to help you with somatic support, to help you with nervous system regulation. This is work that I love to do. I would love to do work with you if you're interested in finding out what that might look like, finding out what true strength and power actually looks like, which is the integration of all parts rather than the denial of some parts. It's delicate and powerful work. It will tap you into strength you never knew you had. Um, and it's work that I love to do, especially with leaders who are carrying a lot and need a lot of power, integration, and wholeness. The more we reject those inner parts of ourselves, those inner children, the more we say, yeah, 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 I already gave you attention 10 years ago. Isn't that enough? I know for my children, it's not enough. And I know that the more we reject parts of ourselves and turn away from them, 
the more they scream out and the more fragmentation we feel within. And then we're holding it together, trying to muscle through when all that is required is integration so that there's greater wholeness, so that there's greater stability, there's no cracks, there's power. And that is beautiful, beautiful work. So I do have spots open for clients who are looking for doing this inner work. Um, the contact information is in the details below this video. Um, at the very least, I support you and encourage you on your journey to facing some of these defense mechanisms, seeing how they may or may not be serving you and continuing along your journey of transformation.